How's it going, everybody? Happy Monday. Welcome back to the live episode of The Big Thing with myself and John Roca. And there's a lot to talk about, man. Civil War. It is the highest grossing weekend for an A24 movie. And it dethrones Kong and Godzilla. And yeah, as you would think with a movie like this, dividing audiences. I've never seen such a divided audience in my comment section about this movie either love this movie hate this movie think it has an agenda think it has that's the problem is it has no agenda so we'll discuss um beetlejuice 2 i'm excited for that movie well one of the things i thought was going to happen was that gina davis was going to have a cameo not the case she says she's not in it and then she gives her reason as far as why she's not in it fallout i watched episode one i got thoughts i got thoughts on fallout we'll talk about that i don't know if john's watching yet but we'll we'll discuss uh if the trailer for that movie is it, that is this is the most anticipated movie for my six and a half year old she cannot wait to see this movie and the newest trailer just came out the final trailer just came out so we'll see rebecca ferguson turned some heads when she made her comments about her co-star who was a turd on wheels and she clarifies that and the spider-man 4 it looks like we might have a shoot date for that maybe maybe not so that and more, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff going on with WWE and uh, whether it's the the last Raw, SmackDown, all that, the, the fallout from WrestleMania. We'll, we'll discuss it, myself and John Roca here today. So if you're brand new to the channel and you've never been here, make sure you subscribe. And this is the live episode. So what we do is after we go through all of our topics, we then take all the Super Chats. And so you guys can put those in there now. I already saw people already throwing them in there. You can do that. And then... What we'll do is we'll read them all off until we get off the uh, the air. So there you go. So thanks for joining us here today. Once again, it's me. It's John Roca. It's the big thing. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are fine. Let's do it. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Big Thing Show. Myself and John Rocco. What's up, John? How was the weekend? What's up, brother? Yeah, good weekend. Very busy. Lots to uh, do. Lots to see. I did see Fallout, so we'll have a fun discussion about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, caught up. How many did you watch? Uh, four. I've watched oh, four watched episodes. Four. Okay. I'm trying to knock them out to maybe do something on the Geek Buddies later on this week. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I saw the controversy. I don't remember where it came from, but uh, about the it was a netflix or somebody somebody talked about this the dumping of everything yeah. at once what did you see this yeah one of the writers for one of the show i think scott pilgrim show okay. he chimed in and said that he really hated it because now no one's talking but scott, scott pilgrim came and went whereas x-men 97 is keeping the drama every yeah. week uh and so yeah it's some interesting conversation to have for sure if you want to have it on the show i'm down we, we should absolutely that's that should be part of the conversation with fallout because i think it was a major 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 error to dump this show all at once um complete error i think that the 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 dump was great when it was just netflix and that was the only mm -hmm. game in town it ain't the only game in town anymore right um and it's it it's still it, it absolutely takes away from the experience but mm -hmm. We'll talk about that a little bit. For sure. Um, yeah, there's a lot, man. There's a lot going on, and I think I'm even starting with. So, did you did you watch? What do you think about the? This is spoilers for people who watched Raw or didn't watch Raw and SmackDown. But um, yeah. How do you feel about them trying to push Solo? Yeah, I, I almost tweeted this out, and I said this feels like NWO black and red and NWO black and white, and yeah. I don't think it's gonna work because I, as as cool as Solo is. Solo ain't at the level of Roman. He right. ain't at the level of Rock. He, and it would take a long... And look, it took Roman years to, build, to yeah. get to the level of Rock. Yeah. It was not overnight. And Solo is cool, but they've never let him speak on the mic or no. hardly ever. He just so, kind of growls. Right. And then you're bringing in a new guy who they all got to get to know again. I mean, look, I mean, for the first time. So it just doesn't make sense to me. And I think eventually it's going to... It's not going to be as exciting and as thrilling. Plus, you can't escape the fact that the Rock's in his 50s, man. And yeah. you, how are you, you know, he's not going to do this full time. So you can't really invest as a wrestling right. fan as strong as you would like. So I get why they're doing it, but I think the bloodline should have just gone away for months. Should have just gone away, let other things take central stage and then bring it back and start the civil war then. Cause 
Now yeah. it just seems like you're still hanging on, you know? Yeah, but uh, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think that they, you got to keep them around because it eventually you, you let them cause havoc as much as you can. And then, and then yes, yeah. it, it gives you the opportunity to give Roman one last face push before he sure. rides off into the sunset. And then, yeah. and then the Usos can return together and be, it, it allows you to do that. The problem with the solo thing for me is yeah. this new guy is way more intriguing to me than solo is. Tamatanga. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Way yeah. more intriguing. He seems more devastating. He seems, I'm mm-hmm. like, let that guy talk. That guy should be the guy who's, who's running shop. So solo just, Solo doesn't have it on the mic. He's just, yeah. he's just kind of, and he's got one move. He just sticks his thumb in your throat, and that's all he does. And it's um, a borrowed move yeah. from, you know, from his ancestors. Right, right? which he's, 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 you know, scary enough, but I'm but sure. not running the whole thing. But I like what Paul Heyman's trying to do. God bless him. He's just yeah. scared of everything. Um, but I think it, I do think that it's necessary into the lead up. The other stuff is Cody Rhodes absolutely owning the role as champion. Um, yeah. Love it. Love it, yeah, and and I love that he's on social media addressing people, mm-hmm. uh, and going back and forth with people. I think that's great. As opposed to hate that James Gunn does it, I love that Cody Rhodes does it and talks to people and lets people know what they're doing. He's definitely going to be a fighting champion, yep. and we're going to see. And I already see you already see the bloodline people, you already see the Roman Reigns lovers going after Cody, but you got to let it breathe for a little bit. And I think it's real important how they program his opponents going forward in order to really solidify his reign. And then build up to something when Reigns comes back. Are they going to tag team together? Right. Like, all kinds of questions down the road that you're going to have uh, some fun with for sure. But I like how it's going so far. Me too. My brother is it's a, my brother's a big Hulk Hogan guy, and he's like always like the good guys when mm. he was growing up. And for some reason he he is he he's such a he's such a Cody hater, and yeah. and he and he's and he writes writes me about. Me and my friend, you see him put in super chats, Met Bull, and yeah. we're on this, we're on this uh, text thing together, and and my brother's like, I hope you cr- Cody crybabies are happy and all this stuff too, and I, and I wrote back and I go, your six, if your six year old self could see you, he'd be ashamed of you <laughs> for shame. <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyway, uh, other stuff, you know, Seth Rollins probably going to be taking a break. It looks like, yeah. Um, same thing with Becky, as you said last week. Yeah, and, call, you know, you could see it coming. Yeah. Yeah, I love this Braun Breaker guy, dude. He oh my God. Guy runs at 300 miles an hour in the ring. I, I love it. Do that for much longer. Dude, you knew. I First time I saw him at NXT, I'm like, this guy is going to be a fucking star. You yeah. just know. You and I have watched wrestling for decades. You know when you see it. And this guy immediately, and I like the way they brought him up. Again, I like what they're doing with him more than I like what they're doing with Jade Cargill. They, they're mm-hmm. actually showing. Both of them are being shown as these indomitable beasts. But I feel like they're doing a way better job with um, with Braun because Braun, no offense, can actually fully wrestle a whole match without needing to be taken care of. And I think I that's that you're going to be right about cool. this. I hate that you're going to be right about this, but like I, because I I was the one that's kind of championing Jade, right? And I, think I love Jade. I think yeah, I just right. think she's going to be like, but she's got. It's like I find myself even say, like, okay, here we go. Squash on this, on the what's her name, Chelsea again. Yeah, Chelsea, and, great, and yeah. that move where she like does this thing where she it's like, it, 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 it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I, it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous. Yeah. I don't think she's gonna be able to hang anyway. Uh, and other than that, I think so far what they've done since WrestleMania has been good. SmackDown and um, Raw were good, and we lead into it. I hate the stupid draft. The draft is oh, the worst. In- I agree stupidest thing that 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 company ever came up with and they're continuing to do it again it's a stupid move um but either way they're going to do it soon and uh and that's it for the for the wrestling side oh, hold on. before we leave the wrestling yeah yeah, yeah. we're going to talk about who punched you in the nose what's that all about brother i mean oh, we, yeah. on the other side what is it is that chocolate oh i thought there was a bruise oh no 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 i got i was i had shit yeah today my uh my little one was doing we i took my father's father-in-law's birthday is today <laughs> uh, yeah because I, I don't know how long we're gonna go before no, you should, <laughs> somebody said it. but no my my father-in-law this it was this, it was a thing this morning it was a whole thing this oh, morning. okay my father-in-law's right. birthday and my and happy, happy Maisie, birthday to your father-in-law yeah my Ma- Maisie was making uh making these cards and she had she had to do the paint this morning she had to do the paint the, the dinosaurs and then <laughs> had to be, and it's like stupid anyway uh so so there you go small um, pride for being a dad yeah that's it but she's she's been she's been in, in, she's incredible so yeah. uh anyway uh moving on and let's get to the, the actual let's get to the, the main story here right. and that's the fact that civil war 
really delivered here. Um, yeah. And I wound up making twenty five point seven million. Yeah. Opening weekend, knocking off Godzilla and Kong, which still came in at number two with fifteen point mm-hmm. five. But Godzilla and Kong now worldwide has made four hundred thirty six million i think it, it that it pushed it, it pushed um warner brothers over a billion dollars already for the for the year yeah totally uh, easily um so kung fu panda oh no ghostbusters frozen empire number three kung fu panda and then dune at number five so civil war uh we haven't really talked about it what did you what did you think of the movie oh i liked it a lot i really enjoyed it and um i, I went in with high expectations uh and i thoroughly enjoyed it from top to bottom I had a couple of issues near the end of the movie with, some, with a couple of things they did with a couple of the characters and some needle drop issues with some of those songs that uh, Garland chose to play at certain moments. But yeah. overall, I thought the film did an incredible job of being apolitical in the fact that it doesn't choose a side, as, yeah. as Garland said, but also it's very clearly an anti-war film. Like it is saying mm-hmm. both sides do stupid shit. Both sides are going to indulge their worser natures. Uh, if we don't get a handle on this, this could be our future. Uh, and it's fascinating to me. Some of you caught up with this California, Texas thing. Who gives a fuck? It's a fictional universe. Right. So in their fictional universe that will that kind of has shades of stuff in our world, they are making uh, Alex is making this commentary. And so for me overall, I thought the film was excellent and totally worked. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I really mm-hmm. did. And I it's it's the problem is that where we are today as a society, people are going to get testy about things. People, I, I agree with you. It's completely apolitical. And someone said, you, you're telling me you don't take a side. Who do you think that Nick Offerman is playing? I said, any dictator that has held on to power too long and, yeah. and has been acting, you know, acting a fool. Yeah. And yeah, right. That It's clearly Trump. It's like, it's, it's not, it, it isn't. And yeah. there he's, he's, a, he doesn't have anything even resembling, uh, all yeah. these, it just seems like a someone who's tr- tried to hold on to power for a bit. And the other thing that they do, they don't paint the other side as wonderful people. They, no. they, they full on murder people in the middle of 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 certain raids and other things happening. They march too. out three military guys and shoot them point blank in the head with right sacks over their black sacks over their heads. That right. is brutal. And, and the final shot is essentially Guantanamo Bay. So to me, both it's everything. Guys, it's yeah. everything. There's no no one to me was was painted well in that in yeah. that film. Even even the and this is I don't disagree with. Someone said, "Well, I don't really find I, I, myself rooting for anybody," and I can get it. I understand that. I understand that for sure. I think that there's there's some characters you think you're gonna you're gonna be rooting for, but even certain choices they make, you're like, "Well, it's kind of selfish." And then um and. <laughs> But I will say who who's the who's the older black guy that uh the the oh, so McKinley Henderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. He, yeah. was, he was great. He he's probably he's probably the most likable guy in the entire movie, I think. Yeah, and I think that's on purpose yes. because he's the older guy. He's from the, the different time, a different generation where we kind of had things a certain way, we accepted things a certain yeah. way all in mass. Nowadays it's not quite that thing. So you see him being a part of this and uh you know I, I think he's great and seen him in a million things he was in dune the first dune he was cut out of the second dune which uh, uh denise said was one of the most heartbreaking cuts he made in the in the dune 2 film so yeah it's a really good actor and he brings the, the that grandfather energy that pathos that you want to see in a film like this yeah did you and it, i don't know what your comment section was like in your reviews but it was like, i've never seen such a split fittingly <laughs> enough such a split comment section where that's like you yeah. get a comment of how great the movie was, and the next comment would be how boring it was, and how horrible it was, and how much it took okay. aside. And like, it was, I've never seen such a divide, and that's probably why it did as well as it did. Yeah. It did yeah. like 30 million people. I wonder, I wonder if it'll continue on what the drop will be like. Would it be a 50% yeah. drop? Would it be an 80% drop? Like, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I think this is an opening weekend movie, and then it'll yeah. slow, it'll drop because I think people are curious. The reviews have been some people have been mixed some people have been on point with their reviews and so uh or liking it rather and so we'll see how the reaction is but i think the public is i think they're hesitant to go and see a film like this like over and over again or go see this at 100 oh. 200 million because it's a little too close to home man and it's not, I, a, it's not an easy watch not yeah easy watch we're in an election year yeah. and, all, and trump's in trial today so i think a lot of people you know, have some feelings about it all. So, yeah. Yeah, it'd be tough. So, uh, and then Kong, versus God, Kong and Godzilla had a nice showing. Again, yeah. we did very well for Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers has started out very well so far mm-hmm. um, as both Dune and Kong and Godzilla. They have a bunch of other movies that are 
coming out this yeah. year. But I think that if this this weekend, let me see what what could take out. I think Abigail's coming out. Is that the one? Yeah, I'm going to see. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. going to see the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare tonight. Oh, I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then and then I see Abigail on Wednesday. Yeah. So those those two movies will you know will will give some competition to Civil War for sure. Right. Um, the following week is Challengers, which I've missed every screening for that. I'm so bummed. <laughs> um, but I really want to see. I probably go to see opening weekend. Okay. Um, you'll love, it. you'll love it, man. That's what I heard. And then May May third is when it all goes down, and that's that's mm-hmm. what's starting with the Fall Guy. So. Yeah, yeah. Fall, Fall Guy is what everyone's waiting for. That, and that's the big, like, I think that's the big official kickoff to the summer movie season, even though Godzilla and Kong is, like, kind of soft to launch. Yeah. But I think it's Fall Guy that's really going to kick off the uh, the summer movie season. Man. Okay. Um, yeah, because I'm I'm curious how, what because that's May 3rd is Fall Guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, what, you know, you and I talked about um, CinemaCon. Yeah. And- at the time when we talked about it, we said it looked like it was a little underwhelming. It seemed to like pick back up a little bit more towards like the last half, right? Yeah, you mean the panels themselves? Yeah, like the news yeah. that came out of it. It seemed like because it because it seemed like nobody really cared at yeah, first. When, when Jeff yeah. talked to Jeff and I talked about it on the hot mic this past week, we did a whole recap on Friday about it. And Jeff said, like, yeah, to him, the Warner panel won because there was a lot of announcements coming out of the Warner panel. Uh, and then Disney had some announcements as well coming out of this thing. And so there was a lot here there's a lot more than you thought and yes people are like oh 2025 is the year for sure but 2024 is kind of starting out well box office wise i mean look at uh, kung fu panda 4 it's almost going to cross five it's almost close to 500 million dollars worldwide yeah. it's still opening in other markets uh oppenheimer is still opening in japan just did like 7 million in japan right and right, so right. It, it, these markets are still opening up in, in american movies and people are going to see these films uh, so I think it's starting out well, and all this doom and gloom that came out of CinemaCon, I think, was overdone by some people who are supposed. What was to the doom and gloom? Well, they were all like, "Oh, there's, you know, they, they had, an, they didn't have a lot to announce. They didn't have a lot oh, to right, show. Right. They, they haven't a lot of finished." But sometimes it's not about qu- quantity; it's about quality. And if you pare it down a little bit, and you you want all these things you're looking forward to, I think people are still excited to see what's. Yeah, going that on. was it. That was for me. Is like, was there excitement? And it seemed like there was some excitement that came out of it. Obviously, yeah. with the Deadpool stuff, which came out of it as well. And I think the one that stole a lot of headlines was the Mickey Seventeen stuff. Yeah, that, that stole yeah. a lot of headlines. So, yeah. curious about it. What you guys think? You know, out of the stuff that we've talked about so far, whether it's Civil War, um, win in the box office, whether it's the controversy around it with people, you know, complaining about it. Loving it, hating yeah. it, and the CinemaCon stuff. I see a lot of Super Chats coming in. Don't worry. The way it works is John and I go through all of our topics first, and then we get to yours, so we will get to them. Before we move on to our next topic, I do yeah. want to tell you guys um, about, well, first of all, we got Cuts back, and I'm so glad that Cuts is back. Um, I was wearing Cuts when they first, uh, they said, I hadn't heard about them, and then they sent us a bunch a while ago and i wear this i wear this you guys have seen me wear it on the air i wear the the kind of the black polo that i love and it's very comfortable and if you guys haven't already tried them you should because they're absolutely wonderful so i'll tell you a little bit more about cuts okay so and i've always told you guys that you know when you go and you check these things out they're all things that i love and i've talked about it many times over that i only have things on the show that i dig so for you guys, most guys, I think, wear a T-shirt every day of their lives if they could. I mean, I know I would. The problem is that most shirts are not acceptable to wear. You can't wear them at work. You can't wear, wear them out like on a date. Well, but today's sponsors, Cuts, they've changed it. Cuts T-shirts are high-quality, wrinkle-free, and so buttery soft that you can look like you're dressing up even when you're dressing down. Yeah, wrinkle-free, and it's true. I've had these things. I love these things. I'm I'm on the move. So when I'm, I'm like, oh, no, my shirt's going to be wrinkled. Nope. In a limited time, you can save money. You can refine the dress code, but you got to head on over to CutsClothing.com and use that code BIGTHING for 20% off. So go to CutsClothing.com and use that code BIGTHING. It's so good. They like, they've like they changed the T-shirt game. It's tons of simple and they're sophisticated items. The bottom stretch, they fit joggers. They, they, they look way better than the khakis, and they're 1,000 times more comfortable. So for a limited time, again, our listeners will get 20% off of your entire order, but get to use that code Big Thing at checkout. 20% off your order at CutsClothing.com. Big Thing. Support our show and tell them that we sent you. Experience the perfect blend of style and comfort with 
Cuts Clothing. Also tell you about our buddies over at AG1. All right, guys, let's talk about AG1. You guys know I love AG1. If you've been listening to my show, you've heard me talk about them, and I've been drinking them for about two years now, and I love it. Never been a vitamins guy. I've told you that. I take it all one shot, AG1. I put it in a water bottle. I shake it up. I'm good to go. I recommend AG1 to my friends. I recommend AG1 to my family, everybody. AG1 is a team of doctors and scientists. It is tested for 950 contaminants and NSF certified for sport. It is formulated based on the latest science and maintains high quality standards. You guys know they've been with us for a while because you guys know too. You've all been checking them out and everybody who's been signing up to AG1 says the same thing. It's changed your energy. It's changed how you approach things in the day. You're smiling more running around the place and you're sleeping better. I know. AG1 is the supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. That's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and you get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. Drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. All right, so once again, thank you to AG1 and Cuts. And like I always say, um, and you guys have been so great about it, you help out the show, you get yourself something wonderful. I always link the sponsors in the description. I always put it as a pinned comment. So every time you go on over there, you're helping out this show tremendously. And it's the reason why we've been able to be on the air for the last two and a half, three years, which is crazy, which is crazy. Yeah, you know, John, now this show, we started this show. Well, I, I took over. The channel was, at one point, it was um, like the big things, uh, Clips channel, and it was like a Schmodown Clips channel and thing, too. And it was, and then I, when I took it over, I just I was putting a big thing on it, and I wasn't doing reviews and all that stuff. And I finally, I when I took, when I started to actually post, like, daily content on it, I think it was November of 2021. So the Mm -hmm. fact that we're, you know, a little over two and a half years now, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Time flies, man. Time flies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And we do. I mean, look, so, and that's the other thing. And before we move on two things we're we're both just trying to push our, uh, our channels and we're trying to do some stuff to do. John's been working on his channel. I, I just did, I have the, my second channel down to earth. We're about to get to 20,000 subscribers in that channel. Nice. We just started that channel. So that channel is growing really fast. We're about to get to 20. I'm hoping we can do that by the end of the month. But, John, you got a lot of stuff you're, you're doing on your channel. Tell us about it. Oh, yeah. The Outlaw Nation, man. Come on over. Outlaw Nation. It's uh, YouTube.com slash John Roca says. A lot of stuff going on there. Like I mentioned, the hot mic. We just dropped our most recent episode on Friday with me and Jeff talk about everything going on at CinemaCon. This past Sunday, yesterday, I dropped a, a, a special episode of the Geek Buddies, which I do with my friend Michael Vogel and Shannon McLung. Michael's a showrunner in animation. He's been in those halls of studios working on transformers working on gi joe uh, and shannon is a writer for animation and also an actress so the three of us been doing that show for a few years now and this past weekend we talked about uh, x-men episode 97 uh, episode 5 rather of x-men 97 which of course bo DeMeo came out and spoke about had a um ha- had a reaction to the pulse nightclub it was what he wrote in reaction and having michael who is a member of the lgbtq community as a, as a as part of the geek buddies it was great to hear his point of view on all of it. So a lot of perspectives, a lot of different people. We got the Star Wars show, Jedi Way with Kevin Smets and the great Laura Kelly, which a lot of you love. And of course, um, uh, uh, my other shows that I have on there uh, with me just doing reactions and having people show up as guests and uh, doing reviews. A lot of stuff going on there on the Outlaw Nation channel. So come on over, people. Come on over. Get us to 50,000. I would really appreciate that before yeah. the end of the year. Yeah. Please do. And you'll see a lot of great reviews. You will see on his channel. You won't see on my channel. That's Shogun. Uh, because I was, um, <laughs> yes, we do Shogun yeah. reviews yeah. every Tuesday. Yes, yeah, those are going well for you. So that's uh, <laughs> thank you. Buddy. That's good. Uh, but the other show that just came out that everybody's talking about is this Fallout show. I did watch episode Ooh. one, and so Fallout game, the game is soaring post the TV launch. Now Amazon yeah. launched their Fallout TV series to critical success and much hype last week, and looks as though the show is already having a wider impact on the part of the franchise that birthed it. Steam DB indicates that a number of games in the Fallout series have seen a large increase in concurrent players 
Counts on Steam follows, follow, excuse me, following its release was some more than tripling their usual numbers. Fallout 4 has seen the biggest leap going from weekend peaks of around 20,000, 24,000 for the six months to 83,000 on Sunday alone. Yeah. Fallout 76 also saw a large jump in numbers, jumping from 13,000 players to almost 40,000 on Sunday, breaking its all-time peak concurrent player count. Um, so yeah, so the TV series is expected to proceed with a second season with production moving from New York and Utah to California as part of a tax incentive. Okay. All right. So I watched episode one. Yeah. Um, and I like it so far. I don't, I didn't know anything about the world. Uh, I got, so this is, I wish I had a camera on, on my house during this though, because I said to my wife, I go, Hey, you want to watch this show, this fallout show? She's like, what is it? And I go, it's a, it's a show that's on, um, it's, it's on Amazon prime. It's getting a lot of buzz. And she's like, what, what is it? I go, I don't really know. <laughs> and so we start watching it and at first she was like she's like oh this is this is kind of crazy and then it's, it gets an intent intense and then there's a scene with i'll just say with with grave with a grave yes yeah and she's like oh she's like, i'm out she's like, <laughs> this is what this is she's like, this is too I'm, I'm out and she bailed on it um but i was like no no i gotta finish i gotta finish it and it's it's yeah. definitely more so for me than it is for her um but um I liked I liked what I saw so far. Mm. I think it's it's pretty good. Walton Goggins is the best. Yeah, it's great to see him. You know, Michael Chiklis tweeted about him how much he's happy yeah, yeah. to see Walt getting the love and respect uh, that he's known since the Shield, of course. Yeah. And a lot of us, like you and I, Christian, we've seen him in a million things and just been waiting for that moment. And it seems like this moment is here. And Ella Purnell, I think, is fantastic as a leader of, of of the show as well. Really enjoying her as a new actress coming in. I haven't seen her in much. People saying arcane and other things, but like I was just blown away by how well they built out this world and how interesting they made it. And you know, we're in a golden age of video game adaptations now, Christian, with Sonic, with Last of Us, with this. It's starting to build. And I was on my PS5 last night, uh, sorting through because I having a big old sale there, and I had no idea how much their Fallout stuff has been discounted. So yeah. this is the right time to jump into that game if you want to play it and have some fun with it. And so. I'm no, I'm not surprised at all to see the game video game numbers jumping so high. Yeah, and it's it's like when it's like any time when something's really popular, like their sales go up. Even when, you know, um, I remember well, well and the unfortunate stuff is like when when artists like die. Yeah, right? yeah. you know, when the artists they're they their stuff skyrockets. But like if there's a movie about somebody, like I wonder like the, what the Bob Marley album sales were like in February, right? right? right. Like. So that stuff happens and it can benefit and it always benefits. The same thing, I wonder what Last of Us sales were like when that game was going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tons of people were playing that game. And especially what's good though is we've we used to talk about this dude all of the time during the Collider era, during mm -hmm. shows, like during the stuff. It was like, when is the video game era going to start? And it was like, it was just like that, you know, in sports terms, that team that just never quit could get out of last place yeah we could yeah so they're starting to get out of last place big time um, because yeah. they've got a bunch of whether it's sonic or last of us or this mm. and the two things this is the thing i always said this and you can go back to this freaking comments back on collider those games will work much better as television series mm. now whether they're hbo amazon netflix whatever it might be because you have time to take that big long story that's told in a video game yeah and you condense it into an hour-long episode or whatever it is but you're at least getting eight ten twelve episodes as opposed to a two and a half hour movie where you got to change everything yeah no you uh, and you were right on that because the thing is the i think it's not a cool i think you can't separate the success of this stuff now from how much more cinematic these games have become, how much more layered and nuanced their storytelling has become because they've gotten Hollywood screenwriters. They've gotten accomplished screenwriters to come in and write a lot of the story within these video games. And so that's the thing that makes it easier to adapt. And because there's so much dense material, trying to think you can do a two-hour movie out of it or an hour and 45 minute, which is usually the video game adaptations, you're way off. Like Warcraft... So, World of Warcraft was not a good movie. Yeah, if you would turn that into a TV series, that could have been super interesting. So yeah, yeah. you're 100 right. That's the way to go because these are so much more dense than they used to be. Whereas Sonic is a fun adventure game and has stuff, or Mario, those are fun to see in the movie theater because they're not really tied to a larger lore and massive mythology. There's much more, much less going on there than there are in these other games. So. Yeah, this is the success that we're seeing now. And they're getting good creators. That's another part of this. Good creators who love 
this stuff to go on and 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 uh, work on it and and make it happen. You know? Yeah, it's true. And I think that even if you look at some of these well books too, I think that this shoot a lot of these books. That's why I still, I, I, anytime I get a chance to take a little subtle jab into Lucasfilm's belly, I will because it's like <laughs> the, the the fact that you're, you're looking for television shows and you've got all of these wonderful novels and authors that have put their heart, sweat, blood, and tears into yep. these novels, and you have such great stories that you could adapt these books and have really well written good stories over the course of like eight to 10 episodes. Instead, you're coming up with these cockamamie stories that are that, that seem like they're written by by seven-year-olds. Um, so that's, and that could be something that you could, whether you do on, um, hey, look, look, look what they're doing with Harry Potter. Yeah. With Harry yeah. Potter, they're, the, the, these are very popular movies and some of the best movies. And Percy Jackson is another example, yeah. right? Yeah. People like you, that. Ha you have more time to expand on what people fell in love with in the first place. Yeah, and even watching those Harry Potter movies as well as they were made, I remember watching those movies and going, "Oh, I remember they left that out of the book." Yeah, I guess they kind of had to. You don't have to do that in in a, in a TV show. Yeah, and the person, from what I'm hearing from the people I know, is the person who's going to be show running that show is one of the head writers for Succession. And so, oh, wow. if you're if you're going with an adult Succession writer route, yeah. that's going to make it even more interesting. I. I always, I'm always um, taken aback by these studios and these IP who just want to go and placate the younger kids. I get that you want to cr create contact with that. Of course, it's important. But kids are so much more older than they used to be nowadays, and they're exposed to more than they you used to be now. More mature? Yeah, more mature. because <laughs> They're older now. Yeah, they're just teenage. Yeah, they're teenage they're fewer. They're emotionally more mature, right? And, and then because they've accessed all this shit at their fingertips, Christian, we had to go sneak books off and try to, you know, it, nowadays kids have access to everything. So no matter what barriers you put up, they find their ways around it. So you got to create content that appeals to them and gets them interested and excited. And a, a more mature adult, a more adult approach, I think, is important for a lot of these IPs to wake up to, man. Yeah, it's true. You know, I saw someone mention that, well, you know, but Halo didn't work. And I was like, it doesn't always work. And the it's other reason, reason, it must have worked to some level. Of a well, second season's I do agree. They said this person said that it sucked. I only watched the first episode and I bailed on it because mm -hmm. this is something that video game movies have done traditionally in the past. And Halo did it also. They're completely changing the game. It's that's yeah, not yeah. it's not the game. It's just you just happen to have Master Chief in it, and you've got the Covenant, and you have this, but it's not the story that you kind of fell in love with. With with right. change, like Last of Us was the story with some changes along. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like that. It's like there's a reason why you fell in love with it in the first place. Don't change it. And right. they changed it. They did the the lone cub and the the wolf and the lone cub again. As I've seen yeah, it yeah. so many different times. I mean, it, from what I heard, season two got better and they st they stayed away from it. But I but I bailed after the first episode. Right. So, right. Yeah. But, and, you yeah. Know, exactly. Exactly. No. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. But I was going wanted to go back to our conversation as we opened up the show with hmm. the binging versus the week hmm. to week because at one point I feel like and I and if someone said well you used to say that uh, binging was better you wanted to watch it all in one shot I very well might have said that and I would go back and tell myself you were wrong. Um, because it, it is exactly what you said and what the showrunner said was that, um, you forget about it after you can have a, like fallout, everybody's talking about it right now, yeah. but because it all dumped, it'll be forgotten in a month. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to letting it air for two months straight and then getting to that fact, we're getting to that, that we're the final episode and you're like, Oh, here we go. This is the episode. And you, that lead up to it. Um, that's say what you want about the Star Wars shows. They are at least doing week to week. They're not dumping it all at one shot. And I think it, it allowed because if those shows came out all one. I mean, look at look at Echo came oh, in one. Yeah, came yeah. In one. within a within a week. And and that's the but it's why I think it's a case by case basis. I, I think you you can't just go yes all binge or no all binge. Yeah. It's case by case basis. Look at Three Body Problem, Christian. Everyone was looking forward to Three Body Problem. No one's talking about it, it, it anymore. It, it came out they like a week it. ago. They dumped no it. Yeah, they dumped it. It was binged. And, but if you had done Three Body Problem every week, yeah. that would have been a super interesting conversation to have about some of the concepts that's presented within that show. I'm still not done with the show. I'm seven episodes in. There's a lot in that show oh, that you yeah. could really explore, do videos on. Mm -hmm. Would it be a lot of fun to have a conversation on? Same thing with Fallout. You know, this thing, like, boom, dump. the fact that you're not taking that week to week I just don't understand the logic. I mean, there's much more to be had with certain shows that have much more to them that makes sense to go week to week, whereas the other stuff that doesn't, 
yeah, dump it, go in and out, you're good to go. You know, we, it's joke, totally about it, dude. we joke about it, but look at Shogun. Shogun's yeah. still in the conversation because it's been on the air for like seven or eight weeks. No one would be talking about Shogun if it had dropped after two weeks. No, no one if it had dropped it over. Yeah, yeah, you would have watched all of it. And it's like, you know, there's, I mean, and look at, look at Stranger Things, right? Stranger Things right. Yeah. was that season, Stranger Things season four did something that a lot of shows can't do. And it made arguably a better season than its first season, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of people that will go back and forth. And say one is the best, four is the best, one is the best, four is the best. That's hard to do unless you're like the, you know, I mean, the Breaking Bad or something like that. It's yeah. hard to do. If imagine if Breaking Bad would all dumped in one, one day, you know, right. and you watch it all in one day. It's like the selfishness of you. Like, yeah, I want to see how, how it ends, but it's like you don't get that anticipation. You just don't get that as it as you're waiting for it. And Stranger Things, I feel like that season with Vecna could have i mean oh, as, yeah. as much as people talked about that show yeah. imagine if people would have talked about that show weekly now net that's the question i have for you when it comes to netflix because yeah. netflix you know amazon prime they've done weekly so it's weird that they dumped it because they yeah. usually do weekly so there was a weird move for them they'll do weekly again they'll go back to weekly for other shows so that's not a thing netflix though has netflix ever done weekly <sighs> i can't think of them having done a weekly show oh no yes well i mean great british bake-off that is every right. week but scripted but, scripted but that's script well that's oh scripted yeah. um, i don't think i can recall a show that has been done week to week that is scripted on netflix and um, maybe people in the chat can think of Yes, yeah, they're saying the same thing. They split it into two, like yeah, you know, I, I know Netflix that. split into two, like the He-Man split into two. It's like wow. now the question is, will they get? Will they be stubborn? And yeah. I think if I'm Netflix, I'm like, okay, the if I'm Saran does, and I'm going, okay, look, people bitch and moan about this shit all the time, yeah. right? Let's try one show. Let's try one show, one of our highly anticipated shows. Let's do it week to week, and let's see. It, does it become the water cooler conversation that we hope it to? Does it help us in the long run? Like, what's the benefit against the negative on it? You know, yeah. like it's because they they give everybody the opportunity to get it all. It's like take your take your time and build it. It's like because they have yeah. other shows they want to drop. I'm like, you can you can have your show in the zeitgeist. You can have your show in the as the number one. I think you made a great point with like three body problem, right? I'm still yeah. I'm only like four episodes into that thing, yeah. but it's like at the the longer I take. Here's the difference between me not watching Shogun and me not watching Three Body Problem right now. Yeah. With Shogun, my plan is to watch episodes uh, like uh, 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 on the actual channel. So I'll watch a few, mm -hmm. release them on the channel. And I know the finale is coming up like this week. Is it this week? Next week. Next week. Next yeah, week. Next right. Episode nine. Yeah. Next week. So, so I still, if I started putting out episodes, watching them in the next couple of days, yeah, I'll still be in the relevant zone for Shogun. Yep. I start doing episode drops for a three body problem. I'm way behind the, I mean, look, I'm a, I'm already four days past the fallouts. Prime, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Which yeah. Is crazy. Our friends late to the party, putting up their reactions. And I don't think they're getting the same numbers than if it had been a week to week. Right. If they're putting up their reaction and, and uh, real rejects does this too, right? They put up their reactions almost uh, a episode, almost a day, but then you're pushing back all your programming yeah. You're you don't have to readjust for how you're planning that out, and so what if other big stuff breaks? Like, are you are you creating a space? So, and then people's interest starts to wane after a week if it, if they've already had time to watch it, they might not be interested to go back and watch you watching it, you know. And so that's a part of it as well as as content creators. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that you know Fallout. I think especially when you get that buzz on, I, I, it's weird that Amazon did it. Like Netflix, like yeah, they do it all the time. They just don't listen to anybody. They're doing it all the time, and here they go again. And it's just like, yo, silly old Netflix. But the fact that Amazon did it when they don't normally do that, like sometimes yeah. they do, sometimes they don't. I can't remember if Mr. and Mrs. Smith was all dumped. I feel like it was. I think it was all dumped, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they, I don't know why Amazon's been doing that lately. Yeah, out of range, it's all dumped at the same time. Reacher wasn't, right? Reacher was week to week, wasn't it? Reacher was, no, that was dumped all at the same time. So maybe Amazon has been doing it more so now. Uh, Apple, I, Apple's always week to week. Yeah, Apple. Apple's always week to week. Yeah. Did you start watching that Colin Farrell show? The Apple oh, one? Yeah, no. You, you know what? Shannon texted me on yesterday, and he's like, dude, you need to start watching this show. And so okay. I'm going to put that on my list uh, to watch this week. I'm going to watch. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Um, all right. So you guys, it, all this stuff, whether you're watching live, um, whether you're not asking a question on Super Chat, whether you're watching it on the replay, 
put your comments in, put your thoughts in there. What do you think about this conversation on the streaming stuff? I'm very curious to hear what you think. Um, oh, yeah. well, Reacher and Invincible were week to week. Okay, so you were. Okay, so Reacher was week to week. Yeah, my bad. Okay. I get them all at once, so I, I sometimes forget with Reacher. Oh, look at you. No, no, oh, oh, you don't even. You, you don't even. Cool. You missed a cool. <laughs> all, right. all right, let's go to uh, <laughs> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's the sequel. And yeah. Gina Davis, I could have sworn. I think we even talked about it on this show. I could have sworn yeah. that Davis was going to do a cameo. Alec Baldwin, obviously, not. Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but she's not. Tim Burton unleashes Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice later this year, which sees many of the cast members returning from the 88 film. Now, there's some that aren't back. Sylvia Sidney uh, passed away in 1999. Glenn Shaddix passed away in 2010. And Jeffrey Jones is out for obvious reasons. Uh, but what about the first film's lead, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis? Both are very much alive and still acting. And with de-aging effects, this could be possible. Sadly, Davis tells Entertainment Tonight she's not in the film and understands why. She says, no, I'm not in it. I'm not in the remake. Oh, you were expecting that I would be? Yeah, no, you know what? Because my theory is that ghosts don't age. Not that I have. Our characters were stuck the way that they looked when they died forever. So it's been a while. It's been a minute. Indeed, those involved in the film's making have made a point of pride that the project utilizes as many practical effects as possible with very little in the way of digital trickery. Michael Keaton is back as a ghost too. However, due to the amount of makeup slathered on his face and his aged up appearance in the original, he doesn't look that different. Davis appeared in the original as Barbara Maitland, the ghost who is seen by Winona Ryder character Lydia Dietz. She adds that she heard the trailer came out but hasn't seen it yet. So Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, Justin Thoreau, Monica Bellucci, Willem Dafoe also star in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which hits the cinemas on September 6th. Um, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> sucks. Um, I think I get it, but sure. like, you know, yeah, I mean, maybe... Maybe it's because of exactly what they said. Yeah, you could have done de aging, but yeah. what you have seen, like, if I'm Tim Burton, I'm like, look, I really want to make a movie like I used to make it. I want to make it with practical effects. And what I don't want to do is make this movie. And then everything everyone is talking about is, well, what did you think about that de aging of Gina Davis scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that. I understand that. I get that. I would have liked to have seen her pop up or even her voice or something pop mm -hmm. up. And in the same way they kind of did, I thought the Harold Ramis stuff in Ghostbusters, the afterlife was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But something else, I mean, I knew that you knew that Alec Baldwin wasn't going to be in it, but yeah. like, but Gina Davis not being in it is a bummer, but I get it. Yeah. I don't think people would have been upset about her showing up and being an yeah. older ghost. I mean, maybe some angry people would have made YouTube videos of like ghosts don't age, but who yeah. gives a shit? It's Gina Davis. And I don't think anybody would have cared if you de-aged her for one scene and had some fun with it. It was a cameo. If you can tell a strong enough story, you can get away with a de-aging moment with Gina Davis. So it's a shame because I loved her and I love her in the show. Uh, sorry, in the film. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think it would have been fun to have her. So it's kind of a bummer that she's not like working in the office with like that uh, the upper level office, which is where I imagine she would be by this point as a ghost, you know, because they yeah. showed there was a bureaucracy they're involved with ghost stuff it would have been fun to see her like as vice president up there or president or some shit that would be a lot of fun but sadly uh, apparently we're not unless that she's doing the the joaquin thing where it's like i don't i haven't been approached about joker i don't know what you're talking about i'm not in it i'm not in it and then she pops up as a cameo i don't well, know same thing with liam neeson right liam neeson did the same yeah thing. no i'm not gonna be quite gone no way right and I, I we we did a whole title of a video said quite uh liam neeson is a liar <laughs> 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 full-on liar there's no way he's not going to be in it. Uh, I mean, I, it could have been in it a lot better than they did going back to that writing. That's yeah, true, true. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I, mean, I, you know, I sold a whole bunch. Obviously, for people who don't know, we're, we're doing the move here soon and moving to New York. And um, and we put that Amazon list up, by the way, and people that, yeah, that yeah. wish list. So thank you to people for the, the studio list to coming up with that idea. Um, but I, um, I was, I'm selling a lot of those Star Wars books that I got, like a Ooh. ton of them. And I actually... I got a question from a guy from a, a guy who was like, Hey, are you just not you know into the franchise as much anymore? And I said, honestly, no, I'm just Ooh, not. You want to have this conversation? Yeah, I can have it. It's like I'm just not, I'm just like, are you not you're not like uh, you were the guy, you were the guy who used to talk about it all the time. And I'm like, Yeah, but like I'm still like as I mentioned to you, I, I said this, I think I said this to you on text, and I've said it a few yeah. different times over on the air, but you'll you'll appreciate it again. You remember when Steve Sachs played for the Yankees back in in like 88 89 yankees were, were bad they were terrible um 
and people were leaving in the fifth inning. That's yeah. where Star Wars is right now. People are leaving in the fifth inning. And it's like, you know, am I going to still watch the games? Yeah, I still watch the games back then. But it, do I hope that we get a, a better coach? Do I hope that we get a better pitcher? Do I hope that we start hitting some home runs? Yeah, I do. But like the franchise is in terrible shape right now. Yeah. It, it, it's in it's 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 really bad. It's really yeah. bad. And the, the more the more stuff that I watch, like and and what I I saw somebody talking about this recently, and there's critics. It's funny. It's yeah. like they were saying, is there a movie? And I can't remember what it was. And I think it was something that Christine Lumiere posted. But it's like, is there a movie that you saw the first time or a TV show you watched the first time that you then went back and said it was either better or worse? And the critics like, yeah, it happens to me all the time. It happens to every critic all the time. But mm -hmm. if you if you do it with Star Wars, and then people lose their minds. Um, but like, there's a couple of things like Ahsoka. Like, I can't. I don't think I can go back and watch Ahsoka anymore because the writing is is really bad in that show. It's like atrociously bad in that show. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You're not wrong. I I, I do not go back and watch much of the Star Wars content beyond Andor or Rogue One. Force Awakens every once in a while. Some of Last Jedi. And Mandalorian stuff, uh, and I agree. I I don't, but it's to me, it's been a combo, right? It's a combo of them delivering some disappointing overall shows and movies, right. and people making a whole cottage industry over getting upset about Star Wars, and you know, taking advantage of the anger and and stoking the anger over and over and over again. And so it's a combo of both. And I think that, and then the people caught in the middle, and there's like. Yeah, it's you know it's all just too much. It's getting to be too much. Even the Ray movie is already like people. Are like, oh, it's never happening. It's trash. It's not. It's so there's nothing they can do at this point that's going to satisfy people. No, so well, just, I mean, well, I don't know, they, but I don't know if that's true. Good content, I guess, is the only thing they it's can. Certainly, do. Hey, look, because I don't, because look, Dune satisfied people. And also, someone said someone does this again. It goes back to the point where like, you talk and people don't really listen to you. Right. I, we, like I didn't I just say that. Yeah, I'm still gonna watch the games. I'm still gonna watch it. Someone's like, "Well, because there's bad writing, you're not gonna watch it." I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just not enjoying it as much because I'm paying. Like, there's some of the stuff that's just not very good on the on the writing of it, and it's also there's yeah. some of the acting is is not wonderful, and some of the choices that are being made for the stories that are told, as I mentioned before. Um, so it's just it's just not you know. And if but the other side of it is what I'm not is when people are like. Well, if you like it, well, then you're not a Star Wars fan. It's like, no, you like it good. I'm glad that if you, well, this happens to be my favorite era of Star Wars. That's awesome. In the same way that, like, if we're talking about wrestling, mm -hmm. that when we're talking about wrestling, that, that some people think, well, this era of wrestling is actually terrible. Okay, yeah. I agree to disagree. I'm enjoying it. I thought, I thought four years ago it was terrible. Yeah. Um, so there's always going to be difference of opinion when it comes to this stuff. But I just, as far as when this person asked me, because then I, we have the, we do the one-on-one -on -one Patreon things that I do. And another guy was like, Ooh. you know, telling me like, aren't you excited about Acolyte? I said, I am curious about Acolyte. Yeah. But I'm now to the point where getting excited about these shows doesn't do me any good because it just, hmm. just, it just not, it, it's, it comes from leadership, man. It comes from leadership and it comes yeah. from them throwing, trying to, well, maybe this one would be the good, the one that people like. It's like put together a freaking plan. Yeah. It's yeah. so anyway. I can't believe we're still saying this. I know. All these years later, put together a freaking plan because that was obviously the problem with the sequel trilogy. And look, I think it's good to have healthy discourse and have healthy disagreement about certain. Listen, you'll never cons convince me that the prequel trilogy is a good trilogy. You'll That's never convince me. And, and I know people love those films and I respect that. But by the same token, I respect you loving those prequel trilogy films and respect me not liking them. It doesn't make me any less of a Star Wars fan, and it doesn't make you any more of a Star Wars yeah. fan. Isn't the Civil War film about that, how both yeah. sides take it to the extreme uh, and do terrible stuff? And the truth is, in the middle is where we all need to be with healthy, uh, open discourse where yeah. we don't walk away hating the other person because they didn't agree with us and it's so far being called a shill, which I think is like one of the most it's fucking. So, so is it just a, it's like that. It's like that scene in in uh, Eight Mile. You know, it's like for yeah. at the end when you, it, it, mm. Eminem knows what he's gonna say. It's like for me, it's like okay, okay, what are you gonna say? You're gonna pull up a Galaxy's Edge thing. Go ahead, throw it in there. You're gonna throw yeah. in. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, throw it in there. What else? You're gonna throw in something about my brother. Okay, go ahead, go in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You throw in what else you got? It's like what do you got? Yeah. Well, you got it. It's, a, it's like, okay, oh, well, that's new. That's fresh. Yeah. Go ahead. That's a new one. Um, so anyway, the, yeah, I just got one. Look, Roka doesn't know Star Wars. There you go. There's another troll who says shit. They all say that shit. Right. And I've been and, talking about Star Wars. 
for, for 40 what? fucking years. And Christian's the one that brought me on to the show because he knew how much of a mainstream Star Wars fan I was when I first started. So you always got these idiots who think they know more or think they have. But it's part of it. It's, it's also part. It's a, you also yeah. realize it, though, when you're doing this, though, after a while, it comes with the territory. right? Oh, yeah. and it, takes, it, it, it takes you a while to get used to it. But, yeah. but, it, but you, it comes with the territory in the same way, like I said, it's like it, my favorite things now when things go to spam, it's that you know, people write these like long diatribes and I'm, I'm like, no one saw oh that. God. God. I mean, I just deleted it. It's my favorite thing in the world. I love, as soon as I see like a 10 paragraph response and the first line is like negative, I love de deleting it because I get the notices yeah. on my phone. I go immediately delete or delete. block your from channel. Yeah. I'm like, you're a waste of space. Why right. am I going to do that? It's true. So but yeah. e either way, um, yeah. lots, lots there to, to talk about, but if people are digging and, and like what's going on there, then that, that's the other thing that's say, yeah. I don't, I don't think that that they should be ridiculed for it. Nope. Um, anyway, let's let's get to this last topic, and yeah. then we'll get to the questions. But sounds good. Spider Man, man, Spider Man yeah. Four, Spider Man Four. They're saying it's targeting a September start. Interestante, Mister Brigante. <laughs> Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures are, are reportedly targeting a late September filming start for the upcoming fourth Tom Holland led Spider Man film. Daniel Rickman says that things should, if they're proceeding as smoothly as they think, we could see a Spidey in cinemas by early as late 2025. That's crazy. That's crazy. That would mark a four-year gap between Spider-Man No Way Home and the next title, the longest gap between Spider-Man films since the five-year break between Maguire's last and Garfield's first. The big catch is the film currently has no director. That won't be hard, though. They'll find one pretty quick on that. And Rickman reiterates that no filmmakers attached, so he adds that an offer is out to someone. The likes of Drew Goddard and Justin Lin are among the names rumored for the gig in times past. But both recently committed to new projects, including a Matrix reboot and the thriller Steak Horse, respectively. Sony has tried to launch their own Spider-Man spinoffs <laughs> in recent years to mostly disastrous results with the likes of Morbius and Madame Webb. Um, this is crazy. Yeah. When the report of a month or two months ago was that they can't get on the same page because Sony wants to do a Spider-Man movie with the multiverse and all over the big grand scale. And Feige wants to do more street level stuff, which is the way to go, by the way. Yeah. Um, where did they settle? Did they settle? Who's the director? And they want to get this thing out by 2025. This sounds like a Sony stink all over. Yeah, I don't understand this. Like, I don't understand the rush on this. And I don't understand trying to get the shoot going already by the end of the year and then trying to get out by 2025. 2025 is already stacked. It is so stacked. And you're going to add another thing here in Russia. Like, are you telling the street level? Or are you telling a bigger story? Uh, there's rumors that they want to bring back, uh, um, you know, all the, the last two, Toby and uh, and Andrew to be a part of it. And it's like, well, great. Then you'll ruin the mystique of No Way Home. All right, fine. But so there's so much of the day. It just shocks me, right? That that they're already considering this. We still got to get a script. We still got to get one that works for what's going on. Marvel is in such a state of flux. How can you possibly write a script without knowing what Marvel is really going to do next over the next phases as they're readjusting everything under the Iger of the new under the new Iger regime? So there's so much that still needs to get hammered out before you can figure out a Spider-Man film. So and just the land. Dude, 2025. So this is this is what's coming. Like, so January 2025. Mm. Um, I, I, it's not January 25, but 2025 so far. You've got, I think there's like four Marvel movies already coming out. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think so. Yeah. In, you've got in May Thunderbolts, which you're not convinced it's going to come out in general. Um, <laughs> not with that asterisk. Come on, Christian. That says we don't even know the film's happening. Yeah, go ahead. June 27th. June 27th. Right now. Yeah, untitled Sony slash Marvel live action film is slated for June 2025. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, that's a year. That's that's about almost. Well, it's about two. No, no, it's a year away. That's a year yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a year to get. They would if they start shooting in September to have it out in June. No way. No Put way. Alone, brother. No way. Fantastic Four then comes out in July. Yeah. Um. And then let's see, entitled Disney film in August. And let's see what they have. Anything kind of settled or held any spots. Yeah. There's nothing held. That's the only spot that's held in June. So June, no way, no chance. 
shoot shoot in September out in June? No way. So I don't know. I mean, Danny Rickman's usually on on point, yeah. right? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the time he is. Sometimes he's off, and he certainly admitted that. Certainly with the um with the Doctor Doom situation, he was a bit off on that. So yeah, I mean, most of the time he's on, but sometimes he does miss. So right. and, and the thing is, you can't really um tie down these scoopers to certain things because everything is so in flux yeah yes in that moment it may be accurate he's heard from studio people that he knows and connections that this is what's happening but then two weeks later like you said christian we had just a few weeks ago they couldn't even get on the same page and that was being reported by all the scoopers and all of a sudden we're all we're good to go we're going to start shooting in the fall but who knows two weeks from now it could be like looks like they're pushing it to 2026 so you just never know you never know stuff no all right, we're going to move on to your questions now. And before we do, I am excited to tell you guys about Rocket Money and Fume. Here you go. Hey, Rocket Money. How much do you guys think that you're paying a month on subscriptions? Yeah, that's what I thought. Most people think they're hey, 80 bucks, 82 bucks. Yeah, right. You're paying closer to around 200 bucks. And that is why I use Rocket Money. What is Rocket Money, Christian? Thank you for asking. I'm going to tell you, me. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending, and it helps you lower your bills. And it's all in one place. It has over 5 million users and counting. Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year and $1 billion in total savings so far. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way. Go to rocketmoney.com slash thing. That's rocketmoney.com slash thing. Rocketmoney.com slash. Let's talk about some habits because you guys know you got some habits and there's nothing better than beating a bad habit with a good habit. And we've talked about fume before you guys you guys know we've talked about fume uh, we've we've had fume on and we're glad that they are back it's great and mark riley is the one who's really been talking this thing up and i can't wait for him to, to talk about it even more so on the show um when he's on for uap and he just talking about how flavorful it was better than he thought it feels very fresh and it's like a refreshing herbal tea but if it was vapor uh it, it was it, you can look at it like sticky soda it's got non it's 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 really good it's it's well weighted it's perfectly balanced it's extremely fun to fidget with and it really look at the, the the wood itself it's it's great you can start the year off right with a good habit by going to tryfume.com slash big thing and getting the journey pack today fume is giving listeners to the show 10 percent off when they use that code big thing to help make starting the good habit much easier because it's you get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. It comes with adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts. It's great. They use flavored air instead of vapor. The fume is completely, completely natural, by the way, instead of electronics. And there's no, this is the reason why I decided people are like, well, why, why would you, why would you get involved with something like this? Why? Because they don't use harmful chemicals. They use delicious flavors. And that's why I got involved. Fume works. They're great. So thank you again to Fume for sponsoring the show. All right. Thank you to Rocket Money and to Fume. As I say every time, make sure you go to the description. You can help the show out that way. You can also go to the pinned comment in the comment section. John, I did it again. I did it again. Rocket Money. I'll tell you about Rocket Money. Rocketmoney.com slash big thing. Not thing. I did it again. Rocketmoney.com slash big thing. So that's the one. That that that, that service helps me out so much. And I, I just had one of those things, too, by the way, where I had, like, I forgot that I um, signed up to this stupid thing that I was trying. I was like, oh, let me try this. I'm like, oh, and I'll cancel it. And yeah. Rocket Money said, hey, dumb dumb, don't forget to cancel it. And I canceled it. So Rocket Money is the best. Rocketmoney.com slash big thing. So just remember that. Um, okay. We got questions. We got answers. All right. Hershey tube. Have either of you watched fallout? It's great. So yeah, I mean, I, obviously we talked about it a little bit, so it is, um, it's so far pretty good. You like the four episodes you've watched thus far. Yeah. I've heard nothing but great things from my people who've watched it all. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm loving the first four episodes and loving the, the characters and the storylines and the worlds they're building out and the humor. It's a lot of good humor mixed with some real, uh, yeah. emotional stakes. So yeah, absolutely. It's pretty graphic too. Yes. hundred yeah. percent. 
uh, Armada. Did you all see the Ryan Gosling, Beavis, and Butthead skit on SNL? I thought it was funny. It was hilarious. Dude. It was hilarious. It was one of the funniest things they've done in a very long time. Yeah, that's what I tuned out. I said it's the best thing I've seen in decades from SNL yeah. in terms of sketch because of everything involved in it. The makeup and then Heidi. Heidi never she breaks. never breaks. And she her, never. she's lost it, dude. It was yeah, someone crazy. was like, oh, don't they practice this? I was like, I do not think that they practiced. I don't think she no saw way. those costumes. There's no, no chance she saw that costume. Like when Mikey Day was pops up his butthead, his teeth, hilarious, hilarious. It was, it was, and he, and when, when, he, when she's call, calling, like, and she's sort of out of here, and he looks at the other guy and he goes, <laughs> yeah. talking to you, man. It was hilarious. It was really, it was really, it was, and Keenan, yeah. Keenan, who kind of does the same thing in every sketch. Like, yeah. Basically, worked, worked, he's so lovable though, but it, like it worked, it worked in this one a lot. Um, oh, like, come on, on, the cartoon, you don't know it. <laughs> you set them together. Come on, man. It was, it, was re- it was really good, and that's the type of stuff okay. that I'm glad that they take swings with and do those types of things yeah. because they would just do, you know, the based off reality politics things all the time, and it's like you're, you, you got to switch it up. You got to switch it up. And I don't think they're as good when they're doing the politics. I don't think they have the guy, the com- comedians, to really, to really right. carry that off. I, I really don't. And, right. But this stuff, this like this whole show was the best episode of the season so was, far. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched oh, that. Right. I saw that. I did see the, the thing. The it's so funny because I, I, what's oh, Caitlin? What's her name? Kate, the the basketball player. Oh yeah, Caitlin Clark. Yeah, I thought it was right. great. Yeah. She she was good. And yeah. it's funny because like I'm like I said I have she's done it right because she's like she's brought a big spotlight to yep. women's basketball right yep. um and i um i had i think it was th- through your tweeting that i had first kind of learned about her and then started seeing mm-hmm. her everywhere and the people obviously taking shots at her because she's right. she's doing the same stuff that that michael jordan was doing as far as on the court not not playing wise but on the court like the type of the same kind of antics and what kobe would do and what other great yeah. athletes athletes would do and she was getting shit for it it's like why yeah. Um, so I liked I liked she I liked the the Michael Che kind of back and forth with that that was good. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Jared Guffey, Happy Tax Day. Nothing happy about it. <laughs> hey, uh, regarding Civil War, I saw the director is attached to a new film called Warfare. Is this a spinoff or a new story? Thanks. I don't know, but I know that he announced that he is going to retire from directing. So is he producing or writing for it? Yeah. He said he's going to keep writing. He did yeah. say he's going to keep writing. So. Uh, I don't know. I but that, that I will say this about Civil War, and I said this in my review and my out of the theater reaction. Mm-hmm. That could have been abs- that absolutely could have been a television series. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. You could absolutely if he wanted to take that the bare bones that are in that movie and turn it into a series like Easy. on Paramount Plus or Netflix or Prime. I mean, that would be genius, and it would be a way for him to take a break from movies and really focus on fleshing out this world a bit more episode to episode. Yep. I would love that, dude. Yep. Yeah uh melissa burn christian what's my love story what's your love story was my love story um <laughs> my my wife still keeping me around i guess my wife my wife i say like, uh, can i still come in yeah that's my love story i love that that's what i say i love that i love that i'm allowed to come in i love that i'm allowed to eat dinner in the house and that i can uh sleep in the bed that's my love story i love that um <laughs> occasionally and, uh, make babies and occasionally make babies yeah. oh i'm done retired Man, <laughs> mad sinister mccall so is my wife she's no way um how many times a month do you go to theaters well i mean i think it just depends on well i'm just thinking about it when it comes to like may may will probably be yeah. at least eight to 12 let's eight to 10 right yeah so yeah it may maybe 12 but um this month has been like uh, this well this week will be like i was supposed to do i was supposed to do monday wednesday and thursday this week Ooh. because i was supposed to do monday night i was going to do tonight i'm doing the, uh, the what's it called the ungenerally warfare. Ungenerally warfare yeah. yeah seeing that one and then abigail on wednesday and then thursday was supposed to be challengers but some of my kids school came up so i can't do challengers again so uh that was supposed to be three um but yeah so that's that's probably the, that's what I'm, you saying, I'm mad we're not getting. I didn't get a Rebel Moon Part Two screening because I did oh, Part okay. One and they okay. didn't do a Rebel Moon here. But Wendy went to the premiere last week. Oh, the fucker! When the fuck was that? What, what did you? What, what? You know, someone complained about you cursing. Oh, I apologize, guys. It's, it's, it's kids that watch. Oh, there are. Yeah, you didn't know that. Well, fuck you, man. Uh, nice. the, 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 real nice. Talking about somebody who doesn't have a kid. They're mature, uh, man. They're getting mature. I mean, I, you know, you know what I said. 
K Dog Westmore looks like WB will be the number one studio for 2024. I don't know about yet. Mm. No, I don't know yet. Dune and Godzilla went crazy. Joker and War of Warham to be hits. I mean, they got a good shot. I'm not going to write you off because they got a good shot. Um, let's you know, let's go back to that schedule. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see because right now they're 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 the ones that they're they're winning right now. There's no doubt about it. So. Yeah. Any like the big hitters that could come out, um, and da, 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 they're re-releasing Alien, but no, the Fall Guy is Universal. Universal doesn't have nothing too big. King of the Planet of the Apes is Disney, 20th Century Fox, so that's yeah. Disney could have a shot there. If is Paramount, okay. Furiosa is Warner Brothers also, so that's that adds to their power. Garfield is Sony. No, um, let's see. Oh, did you watch UFC 300 by the way? Uh, no, is it? I, uh, is I watched. It I, it was dude there's a fight the bmf championship which i never knew was a thing oh the bad mother yeah watch that have you seen that fight no i haven't but i know i've it seen is, fights for that belt before yes it okay. is the craziest at, now remember i okay. so i was i'm going I'm, I'm gonna be doing a show with matt sarah when i go back to new york yeah, yeah yeah so i was i was texting him over the weekend and he's like big fights and i was like that's right ufc 300 so I, i'm gonna watch so i bought the pay-per-view and watched it yeah the bmf championship and I remember I, I used to watch, you know, how I used to watch UFC religiously. Yeah. I have not seen an ending to a fight like this. Maybe ever. Okay. Maybe ever. It is, it is in the top three, if not the best okay. finishes to a fight ever. All you right. Will, I have to find it. You find it and don't, and don't find it on, you watch it quick before you get spoiled because yeah. I've already seen it on Instagram um as okay. far as like you know the the ending of it it's mm -hmm. it's the craziest it's the craziest ending i've ever seen and rogan mm -hmm. loses his freaking mind and as well as he should have yes. um so all right inside out is disney yeah um so they've got disney so far as the contender to fight with them um let's see what else quiet place is paramount but still not enough to build universal got despicable me for that that yeah. gives a little bit of a chance um Untitled New Line Horror from Warner Brothers, Universal is Twisters, did Deadpool and Wolverine by Disney. So, and then Trap Trap is Warner Brothers. I don't know what Trap is. I'm not sure what that is. You know what that yeah, is? Uh, it's the um, uh, M Night Shyamalan film. Oh, with, okay. Uh, what's okay. His, Josh Hartnett? That's, That's right. Okay. Movie. Alien Romulus is is Fox or mm -hmm. or Warner Brothers rather. Uh, no, Alien Romulus is Disney. Disney. Right? Yeah. Disney um and then beetlejuice beetlejuice is warner brothers so the fight the fight is between warner brothers and disney totally that's the fight um and then you've got superman the christopher reeve story which is warner brothers joker which is warner brothers um yeah i mean yeah the moana 2 disney yeah so yeah it's a it's a fight between and then war of rohan and then mufasa for lion king so it's a fight between disney and warner brothers with and one, you're not wrong though. Warner Brothers could win it again. Yeah, I mean, not win it again, but could win it this year. Um, yeah, it's true. Okay, Kenneth Colton. Hey, six weeks in theaters and 684 million worldwide. Dune two become comes out digital this week. Not a big physical media, but I had to get both 4K steelbooks from Amazon. Happy Monday. Yeah, I, that one I I made sure because they they send out the press release for that one. I reached out. I was like, I need I I need that one, please, yeah. please. Uh, Mike Joyce. I was sent down by Washington D.C. to see what kind of American can be profitable for Frito Lay. Why is film Twitter obsessed with Jesse Plemons? Um, I don't know if I. Uh, well, Jesse Plemons was great. He was great. And yeah, uh, but they're implying that he's like he's uh, over. They always come after Jesse for his weight, and it's so frustrating because he's such a fucking great actor. And they're implying that he's like you know he didn't he looked like a. Uh, you know kind of guy who would be overweight playing this kind of character oh. it's so ridiculous it's he's so dude, he's terrifying yeah he terrifying in breaking bad and he was terrifying in this and he's such an amazing actor mm -hmm. that he can turn it on its head and then make himself lovable and likable like in that movie and even though he was a bit of a, a weirdo in the movie um yeah. the what's the what the game night game night oh my god it's hilarious great game night he was great in and he was you know and he was definitely you know the the good guy in uh killers of the flower moon Ah, uh, yeah fair point so he's he's really he's a he's a phenomenal actor 
Yeah, I like him too. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. People are saying the Frito Lay thing is a joke from Game Night. So apparently, we haven't watched Game Night enough, Jeff. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, Christian, to get it. Oh, so okay. My, okay. My bad, y'all. I thought it was something else. You comment oh. on his weight all the time. I thought it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, so I guess not. Justin Fountain. Personally, I really enjoyed the Fallout show. It encapsulates the spirit and overall essence the game series with its characters and overall world building. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm super excited about it, man. Um, I want to see the rest of it. I'm going to watch it. I'm, what I am going to do, though, is yeah. um, what I am going to do is is like finish up three body problem. Then I'm going to finish Fallout, and then I'll have to do the when I find the damn time. I because I want to do I do want to do Shogun during like when I have war, like a break in time because this yeah. time, Mondays and Wednesdays are my busiest days. Like they're, yeah. I don't I can't find, like Tuesdays Tuesdays Thursdays and Fridays I have more time to potentially watch yeah the show and then put it up so we'll see i'm trying to do weekends so i have like mondays and wednesdays off i'm trying to do weekends but well, the only problem with weekends is that are are people watching on the weekends i mean my our geek buddy show is almost at uh, eight thousand or seven thousand views and we just dropped it at 9 a.m yesterday and that's a pretty quick uh amount of views to get so i find good reactions on sundays for my stuff uh, jedi way's done well on sundays as well so yeah i get lucky all right, this is Felix. The sound in Civil War was uh, was am amazing. Mm -hmm. like he, the sound was amazing. I agree with you, by the way. There were, for the most part, yeah, I loved the music, but there were a couple of times when I'm like, that bad song choice, and it just sucked yeah. me right out of the movie. I will say this: I read an article in in Slash Film where the person was complaining about how loud the film was. Oh, it's, supposed to, it's a war the film. effing point. Yeah. It's supposed to unsettle you, make you messed up, rattle you inside. When did film goers become so goddamn sensitive? I don't understand. Fil certain films well, the world are supposed so to sensitive. mess you up. Yeah, fair point. The films are supposed to mess you up. Certain films about certain topics. This film being loud, and Alex came out and said he did this on purpose because he didn't like the way that gun violence is actually depicted in films. He wanted to show what it would really sound like and how loud a weapon actually is in real life when you hear it. So oh, that's jarring. Augmented. It's, yeah, yeah, it's so. jarring. Let's say it was, yeah, the, dude, the whole world is too sensitive. I saw somebody, this, what's it was announced Generation Z. Is that what it is? Yeah, Gen oh. Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I just we recently watched Sex in the City, and there's a lot of problems with that show. It's like, shut up. It's like, what are you, are you, what are you going to watch All in the Family next? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and not get the point of All in the Family. <laughs> Shut up. It's like, and then there's also the other thing with like freaking, uh, like Three's Company. Like, yeah, they're, like there's no world. Like, by the way, if you went back, if you went back and watched Marrying with Children right now, <laughs> that person's head would spin off their body and land on the moon. Yeah. Like, it is one of the best shows ever, but it is about as politically incorrect as you're going to get. So, the there was the idea that you know what we can take a joke and we can laugh at everything yeah no there's no world where you watch you watch a five, you watch one episode of married with children the fact <laughs> that that show is loud in the air back then was interesting <laughs> that show is absolutely it's one of my favorite shows of all time yeah I, love a, that show. I know i agree i love that show too shay markel looks like christian's been brown nosing <laughs> Sorry, but I had to. Happy birthday to your family. I love this show, man. You guys are great. Thanks, Shay. That's Thank very you. kind. You appreciate it. Yes. I mean, look, this is the thing. When you have kids, you just, and especially when it's moving, at the, they're both arguing on who, because they both wanted me to take them to school this morning. Like the oldest wanted me to, because but the oldest wanted me to take her because I take her to Starbucks to get her one of the, in the morning, I get her the, uh, the, the breakfast sandwich. I was oh, like, yeah. yeah. And then the little one's like, come on, I want to pretend that I'm, we're, we're in the lava and I'm doing it and I'm, going through the forest and i'm like all right let's just get the hell out of the house how about that yeah. uh samo is probably yeah. before we talked about it but uh have you guys watched the fallout show yes and we will continue to watch it for sure yep um okay you said ghostbusters is shitting the bed is it yeah it's only made 160 million worldwide and it's it's completely like you know diving and it was made for 100 million so uh, that's uh, kind of a failure great. it's not yeah. great yeah that's too bad i like that movie yeah, I know. Um, my choice. You're gonna see a Sasquatch Sunset. I heard good things about that movie, surprisingly enough. But no, I, I'm not gonna see it. Is that the Jesse? Uh, the, no, I don't know. It's about it's about the the Sasquatch family. I don't know. It's like <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Matt Sinister McCall sent this super in the bathroom while at work and didn't tell my boss. Hope we were ripping one out. Uh, any tips for writers on a routine? I've written a book and would like to try a screenplay. 
So, I mean, look, it's a, for me, it's just practice, 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 like anything else too, right? I remember when, and I guess it's easier nowadays than it was back in the day with the programs that they have and the things you can set up. And, but, um, but I would just say, if you're going to convert your book or just, just block out whatever you're going to block out and just take a shot at, 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 at writing the script and make sure that like, you do have to follow the idea of minute per space per page and, and you know you get to 120 pages that's a that's a two-hour movie so just keep that in mind yeah so um okay armada what's gonna make more money furious furious or apes apes no doubt uh, uh you, you want to go another one you're already gonna owe me money or not money but no way no way that thing is crossing a billion um uh, I'll say Furiosa. Yeah, I'll say just to be counter, I'll say Furiosa. I, th I actually think it's going to be a better film than Apes, and I think people are going to be that's a different conversation. Crazy. That's, a different, that's a different conversation. It's going to so, affect the box office. Are we doing? Are you want you want to go double or nothing? All right, double or nothing. Double. So two steak dinners. Two steak dinners. You're only saying that. Well, look, no, they no wait. One steak dinner because that's a bigger. The Deadpool yeah. thing's a bigger thing. So I'll get you a chicken dinner for. How about you? Know, how about a lunch? A fish dinner. No, no, you know what we'll do? We'll do. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. We'll do a. We'll do a is, hmm, I'm trying to think. What can we do? I'll do Olive Garden. How about that? <laughs> but yeah, we'll do an Olive Garden. We'll Olive do an, Garden we'll, bet, fine. We'll do an Olive Garden bet. So, the billion dollars for Deadpool, and that's a steak dinner. The, yeah. Oh, and and this is why we do this on the air because this weasels try to get out of his bet. <laughs> This guy, different times. Every man knows Christian. Uh, please, well, please, and then so the so this bet is that apes on its run will do better than Furiosa. Oh, we should clarify domestically, globally. What are we? What, what are we saying? Let's overall, say, let's say overall, we'll say globally. Okay. Overall, yeah. global, global, right. globally, globally. Um, yeah, I just think it's. I just think that Furiosa is a little bit, and so is Mad Max. Because what did what did Mad Max do? Um, that's what I'm. That's Mad Fury Max. Road? Yeah, Fury Road. let's see. Fury Road. You made two point five billion dollars. So two point five billion? No, it did not. <laughs> Fury Road. Uh, let's see what was it? Box office moon jump. Yeah, go to box. Office. Let's see what it did. It made because I remember I won. I won the bet from these other from all, everybody at, at, at like three seventy nine. That's not bad. It made yeah, eighty. It made one fifty three domestically. Now, now apes. Let's see what the last apes did. Okay, War of the Planet of the Apes. It right. was a, it was underperformer. That's why they redid it. Okay, so War of the Planet of the Apes, which is the four, last one for the yeah, you made almost five hundred million. You, you you're gonna lose. It's close. You're gonna lose. You're right. Okay. Similar yeah. budget too. Surprising. Galagos, Civil War and Fallout. Good week for post apocalyptic fans for real. <laughs> My question, both of you: What is your favorite of Garland's work? My favorite is Sunshine. Cheers. I I mean it it's Ex Machina. Ex -Machina. Yeah. Yeah, that movie's just is it's probably his that's his Mona Lisa. Yeah, that's a fucking great movie, man. Great. Yeah. It's really good. I saw people uh, trying to go after him as a creator. I'm like, you are idiots, man. I, he, and I thought he was, and this is a good one. If you're gonna step off the court, this is a good one to step off the court. Um oh so, yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah, agree. Jay Wes, would you Aroka inter interview Bo DeMeo about X-Men or stay away from interviewing him because of the controversy? I mean, my my question to his reps would be, Am I allowed to bring up you know the controversy if not i don't yeah. think i want to uh, because I, I don't like doing that i i had an actor on once mm -hmm. I don't know who it was it was on one-on-one -on -one with christian harloff and the and the actor walked in and i said to them um i don't know if i told you the story and i said before we start going is there anything that's off the table that i cannot bring up and they looked at me and said no bring up whatever you want said, okay great yeah you always gotta ask so i'm in the middle of my interview and I'm asking this person a question. I said, so let me ask you a question. Because we're having a great rapport. We're laughing the whole time. I said, what was this whole thing about? And the PR rep comes over and goes, no, 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 stop, stop. And I'm like, don't stop my fucking yeah, interview. Yeah. I'm like, you can tell me afterwards. We're not live. Right. You can tell me afterwards yeah, yeah, yeah. that we want to cut that out. We'd rather you not air that. And because we have a good relationship, of course, I'm going to cut it out. I never, I never run. Yeah. If someone says to me they want you to cut it out, I cut it out because yeah. I don't want to cause a bad relationship, but don't stop the interview and go, no, 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 you got to stop. I'm like, who? You're not the producer of the show. You're a fucking publicist. Cut it out. Great publicist, yeah. but you could cut it out. I had the same situation with Gavin Hood when I was doing Deep Cut over there at Collider. I, I locked doors now when we did stuff yeah. in the studio because I didn't want um, a publicist coming. And that publicist 
I had 20 minutes of Gavin Hood telling me what his actual experience was like directing oh, yeah. the Wolverine yeah. film yeah. and yeah. what he went through. You told me and, that. And yeah, and they told me to cut. And afterwards, he was like screaming at me, and I was like, I'm going to cut it. Who was screaming at you? Gavin, who was screaming at you? The publicist was. Yeah, the publicist from okay. Paramount. And I was like, I'm going to keep it, but uh, and I'll cut it, but I'm going to keep it. You know, because you you respect that, but yeah, trying to stop the interview, trying to knock on the door, I mean, let stop it. You stop it. It's like you say, like you know, we have a good relationship that I'll, but I'm not going to not ask the question because right. that's the whole point. So to answer your question, yes, I would absolutely want to bring that up. Yeah. Um, so it says Van Dam about the milk and cookies. Yeah, that was my favorite. I can't. I still because you got to remember that Roca and Roca, uh, Ellis and uh, Makuga were such diehard Van Dam fans. As was I. Yeah, they were expecting like a whole trip down memory lane with his movies, and the second I started talking to this guy, I'm like, "That ain't what we're getting, guys. Nope, nope. we're getting <laughs> we're getting Mars to Venus. We're getting we're getting we're getting everything but." And I was like, "I would you watch me? I'm wide eyed the whole yeah time. yeah 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 yeah. Was, You're just fascinated. Best. Yeah. I was fascinated. I was like, "Just take me on." And he said, "Do you want some milk?" I said, "Yes." I said, do you want some cookies? I said, yes. I said, do you want your green card? I said, do not my green card. I said, you have your green card. <laughs> so good. Mike Joyce, if you became an immortal ghoul like Walton in Fallout, how would you spend your time in the apocalypse? Uh, probably trying to fix my face. <laughs> hey. Right, that guy's face. Um, yeah, I don't know. What about you? Uh, same. I'd have been him. Yeah. Look, he's, he's a cowboy, ain't he? Yeah. I, I would do the exact same thing. You would have done that. Yeah. Um, Okay, we can keep going here. We got Alex. Okay. 616. Hey, what's up, Christian and Roka? I hope you guys are doing good. Thank you. Question, what do you guys think of Jake Gyllenhaal saying he would love to play Batman in the DCU? Personally, I love it. How about you guys? I'm, I see Roka kind of tilting yeah. his head a little bit. I I'm prefer. I would prefer Jensen Eccles. I think he would be fantastic. Um, but my uh, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't be I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be against it. I like I like Gyllenhaal a lot. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have been against it in the previous regime, but I, I don't think Gunn is going to do it. He's going to go young. He wants, you know, the age appropriate. Corin Sweat, who's ever around Corin Sweat's age, that's who's going to look at. So, I, I, in no way do I think they're going to go with an older guy like Jill and Hall. It just doesn't make sense because they've got so much history of the Batman to tell that I don't think they would just bring in someone who's like what almost fifty. So, I just right. don't think it would make sense. Right. Um. All right, Galagos. Thank you, man. Absolutely agree. Weekly is better. Do you think the Bear season three will go weekly, even though season one and season two was under the binge? Um, probably not. They're yeah. probably going to stay. They're going to stay the stay consistent. I wish that they would. That's a show I definitely wish would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love that that show. What a and because look, you're going to have that. You're yeah. going to have Acolyte. You're going to have House of the Dragon. That's all in June, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's week to week, and so that's going to be interesting. Acolyte, I don't know if it's week to week or if it is. I believe it's week to week. It's only eight episodes. Yeah. Okay, so that's week to week, um, but a half an hour episodes. Stupid. Um, and then House of the Dragon, hour long episodes. Only week to week. Week to week. The Bear all dropped in one day, and then there's one other show that comes out in June, something big. I can't remember what it was. Okay. Um, I wonder. Speaking of this, like, what is the conversation? You know, what's the water cooler show? And I'm going to say it's going to be House of the Dragon. Oh, yeah. 100%. Right. Yeah. 100%. Uh, Pete Parker, 2288. Really enjoyed Civil War. Do you think it has any chance of the Oscars? It makes me want to see Garland do more action because that last battle, wow. No, I think it's too early. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's not enough. It was it was an in-depth movie, but not the kind of in-depth for Academy Awards as far as the story stuff. Yeah. It's not one of those punch you in the heart type movies. Yeah. yeah. Like. Which is crazy. I know. I yeah. know. But no. If um, he had depicted the Civil War from both sides, I think you're talking, hey, having another conversation. Right. But because he kept it about these four journalists uh, and photographers, I think it keeps it from becoming a, a best picture nominee. Yeah, I had a. I said that at one point. I was like, oh, I was a journalist. I was a photographer, and then whatever it's photo journal, whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. someone goes, "No, it's not that either one. It's this." And I wrote, "Who cares?" <laughs> <laughs> so when people try to correct you. Like, this right now, who cares? I know. It's like you know, good for you. Yeah, good for yeah. you. The boy season four. That's in June. There you oh, go. that's it. That's yeah, it. Wow. That, and that's week to week. <sighs> well, that's week to. That's an Amazon. That's week to week. Yep. True. Very true. Francisco Lopez. What TV genres? should be suitable for binge watching for me it's sitcom comedy but show like drama thriller 
sci-fi could be weekly show i mean if it's not you know um if it's just kind of uh what's the word where it's it does it's it's not connected it's just it's, it, it, oh yeah uh, yeah it's not a um uh, yeah right, right. you yes. know what I mean? yeah, yeah whatever it is uh if it's if it doesn't play into the next week it's just, it just you know like simpsons or whatever it might be you want to binge them all in one shot and like it doesn't one to the next fine but like when it when it's all when you're building up and you want to get people talking about your show yeah, well, it's not serialized is what you're trying to say yeah i think so yeah that was hilarious. you just said you said serialized it heard you say it again serialized no it didn't work that time no, it didn't work. It the eye. um yeah with francisco again this idea of what genres no again you're generalizing it has to be sp show by show there yeah. are certain shows in every genre that should be weekly and certain shows in every genre that should be uh, binged so, uh, so it's different you know Armada, do you think we'll ever get any more SNL movies? I'll tell you what. Yeah. Peacock should be doing original SNL movies because they're not going to play in the theater. Yeah. You don't, those movies, are, unless unless you make them for like 5 or $10 million and you want to take a shot with comedies, the, the day of the $50, $60 million, $100 million comedies is, is about as big of a risk as you can take. So make why Peacock isn't making original Saturday Night Live movies, I have no idea. They did the please don't destroy movie, but you know it didn't do well and it didn't get a, a lot of attention. But there are how many characters have you seen over the last few years that you'd want to see a movie from? That's the thing that I kind of hesitate about, you know. Yeah. Um, Carlton Rudder, good evening from the UK. What's up, man? I love Fallout. I'm on episode five. John, did you manage to finish watching this weekend? Christian, did you how did you how you manage to start it yet? I did oh, I did I did start episode one. Yeah. But um, but John, you did you finish what episode you're finished? No, no, I, I had a busy weekend. There was a lot going on this weekend. Yeah. I went to see Civil War, did my review, had a lot of stuff yeah. going on, so I did not get a chance to see it. So um, it car shot right now. So. That the BMF fight was insane. I'm telling you, dude, when okay. you see the fight, it was it was insane. It was insane. I've never seen any. I've never seen an ending to a fight like that ever. I've okay. never seen anything like that. It was it was incredible. Um, yeah, the whole but someone's right. So they said that's that's why the fight was so good. By the way, the ending because mm -hmm. the ending is incredible, but it's the fight itself is is just awesome all from start to finish. Okay, the ending made it even better, like even okay. better. Like the fact it was like it's like you're watching an incredible movie, like one of the best movies you've ever seen. Right, and then it just has an incredible ending. Also, it was one of the most it was one of the best fights I've ever seen. Okay, uh, Mike Joyce, good idea to remake scary movies. Spoof movies are dead. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of, I think it missed it kind of, you know, that at this point it's kind of missed its mark. Those types, again, it's the same thing. Comedies right now yeah. are not why people are going to movie theaters. It's well, crazy. Japanese, they're making a comeback. I, I We'll have to see. We'll have to see they if, they, if they do. Well, because they're getting greenlit. There are more comedies being greenlit coming out of CinemaCon from these announcements. So we will see. But there's a there's been a lot of successful horror over the last few years. So there's a lot of horror to make fun of. I think if it's going to work, you've got to find someone like Anna Faris. Yeah, Are you yeah. going to find another Anna Faris that's going to be able to carry you movie to movie and make it interesting, or else it'll come off looking like something that should go straight to DVD? It depends know. on what you're going to do. Also, when you when you talk about comedies, like when you're mm -hmm. talking about like you know um, anyone but you, which was a successful Ooh. comedy because it cost thirteen dollars and a Snicker bar, <laughs> yeah. um, and then made a profit. You know, and they, they that that's how you have to make comedies. If you're making comedies that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. take a shot. Yeah, why not? Don't make 50, 60, 70 million dollar comedies. They are not working and they're not going to turn your profit right now. That's fair. Um, George, hey, so, George, did you guys see the latest article about Dan Lynn and Netflix? I didn't. Uh, is he going to further ruin Netflix or could he be its savior? Um, I like Dan Lynn. I knew Dan Lynn in my time at, at Warner Brothers. I was like Dan Lynn. Um, I had a friend who worked for Dan Lynn for a long time. Um, and then Dan Lynn was going to was uh, remember before James Gunn came in, that's who they said was going to run DC. Yeah. Yes. Um, Dan Lynn's a very smart guy. I don't, I didn't see the article itself, so I don't know what they're going to say. And I don't know what his approach is going to be, but Dan Lynn's a good dude. So I, I, I root for Dan. Yeah. It's in the New York times this morning, basically saying that he's going to make a more varied slate of movies to appeal to the array of interest among subscribers. So yeah, we'll why not? Gonna do. Galagos, also good luck and congrats on the move. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah we, we um we're excited. Um, let's see if there's any more that are coming in. I think that there are. Okay. Felix. Oh yeah, same question. Do you think that Civil War can get any Oscar noms? Sound, maybe? Yeah. Sound, but yeah. 
that would be interesting if they're going to do it. I don't know. Um, did you wind up? You saw that picture of Saul in uh, at WrestleMania, right? Oh my God, He's, yeah, it was hilarious. He 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 actually sent me the picture uh, oh. as well as a DM on Twitter and said. You think I don't look Scottish? And I didn't say it. Didn't say I didn't say he doesn't look Scottish. I said he's never thought of him as Scottish. No, when you hear his voice, he sounds, he sounds like he should be in Goodfellas. Yeah, he should be yeah. spitting me a pie in New York. <laughs> Pete Rolling. Parker, twenty two eighty eight. Time window for the movie before oh, summer. Yeah. Is no, that, the move, the move. When are you oh, move? Move yeah. for the movie. So what movie are they talking about? Um, yeah, probably in the in the area of that. I'm gonna we're gonna go try to set up the studio first. And that's why we put that Amazon list out there too. We're doing, we're putting all this stuff in there ourselves, but we're also doing like uh, anything that we can get put into the studio first and then moving the family out probably in summer. Yeah. Um, which is going to be, what's is hilarious because people were like, well, is that going to change the, uh, the dynamic of the shows? I only do three shows that are in studio. You're me and you are virtual. Yeah. The yeah. UAP show, for the most part, has been virtual. The other three have been in studio. I'm doing one studio show with Matt Sarah, so that's that's in studio. So that so there's really only two, and then we'll be we'll be doing we'll be doing the shows. You know, I'm mean, going to have the same crew on virtual. So it's and because this stream this is the only show I do on Streamyard, and I might even eliminate the Streamyard element of it all, and we'll probably just go back to OBS because even when I'm talking over, I can hear sometimes the, the sound on Streamyard is so bad. I I. Yeah, no. I hate StreamYard. I hate it. It's just so easy to do the super chat and everything over there too. And there's another way to do it through OBS and yeah. the quality will look. John's got a really good camera. My camera's really good too. So like when it comes to like, it distorts the quality a little bit too. Yeah. OBS, I'm going to try to change it up for our show. Um, but you won't even notice it. And the sound will, and especially if you're listening on, on podcast form, you won't even notice it. Yeah. Uh, Met Bull, there he is. Any thoughts on AEW airing CM Punk footage? I wrote it to I, I i wrote to um i'm glad you brought that up because i wanted to talk about that mm -hmm. um brad gilmore wrote about it and how he thought it was such a bad move and i wrote it is the definition of a piker move it was yeah. such a horrible move and shows you that this guy has no clue what he's doing because like at that point you're you're you run the test you run the test and you're like okay you know what we're going to air this footage and everyone even yeah. people even your fans are going don't do that. Yep. Yep. Don't do that. And you don't listen and you do it. You don't have any sound on the footage. So it looks like everything that Punk said on Ariel Hawani's show was factual. He went yep. up, you don't know what he's saying. So you're going to take the benefit of the doubt is that he went up and he, he shoved them. And like, you know, there is this thing that people are like, well, you're shoving a coworker. They're wrestlers. Oh, for fuck's so sake. Vince McMahon oh. got knocked out by Bret Hart. Yeah. I mean, you know, what did you want fear for his life? He talked about. <laughs> Talk about people being too sensitive. I saw those comments as well. People are like, it's a coworker. You're supporting toxicity. First of all, grow the fuck up. Second of all, understand what you're talking about, which is this is pro wrestling, man. People have fought each other all the time in the back of pro wrestling. That is part of the situation. That happens all the time. Happens in sports as well. People fight on, in, on NFL fields. People punch each other in hockey. People punch each other in uh, baseball. That's the game. No one gets arrested. No one gets put in fucking jail. That is the game, okay? And when you're watching that video, first of all, the video has no audio, which is a big, massive mistake right. as well. Second of all, the it looks very clearly that everything Punk said pretty much aligns up to what you see in the video. I saw people like lay down when Punk told Ariel Hawani in time it, to yeah. what you were seeing in the video. And you're like, see? And then they started pulling footage. Then they started pulling people who were clipping it out and they started yeah. like doing copyright strikes. So it's like, why are you putting it out in the first place? Well, and then and then the British, uh, I think the British Broadcasting Network came after him because you're not supposed, you. he was supposed to get permission from all these different markets in order to post the footage. So he even fucked up on that end. And this is, but the thing is, this guy is a multi-billionaire because of his dad's money and his own stuff. So he, I mean, making these mistakes, I guess doesn't bother him, but it stains everybody. Like Mercedes is stained by this. Who just got there? Edge is stained. Osprey is stained. All these guys are stained, and the young bucks go fuck themselves. But everyone else, who's the guy? Who's, who was the guy that was giving the interview to Renee and started taking shots at Will Osprey? Will Osprey, who's a British guy, who only people know inside of wrestling. You what know what I mean? Yeah. What a dummy. Oh, it's like it's like think about you think, the guy who runs the biggest fucking federation. Think about your future job. Yeah. You know, that, uh, what happens? What happens when that when that thing is gone? Right. What a dummy. That was a dumb, that was a dumb move. Even yeah. Renee was like, mm. Yeah. All right. Uh Al Rensha. Amazing that Godzilla and Kong is the least expensive movie in a monster verse, and it might be the best. <laughs> Shows that you don't always need to spend 200 million. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, it costs like 120 or something. And that's uh, and because they got Rebecca Black, right? Not Rebecca Black, she's the singer. Rebecca, uh, what's, what's Rebecca her Hall. Yeah, Rebecca yeah. Hall, Rebecca Black, <laughs> Friday. It's Friday, Friday, gonna she's get there. down on Friday. Um, <laughs> she would have been great in that movie, I think uh, so too. Yeah, but uh, no, so Rebecca, <laughs> Rebecca Hall is she great actress, didn't, yeah. didn't probably cost a lot. Same thing, Dan Stevens, great actor, didn't cost too much, and they didn't need to spend that much they just had the the monkey and the gut and the lizard fight do things and that's it yeah um all right armada do you think it would be too expensive to adapt invincible as a live action movie plus all the gore i mean no it's you can do you can do a movie like that i mean look look at look at chronicle right chronicle yeah. made people fly and look realistic and that movie cost nothing you can yeah. you can do that on a smaller scale and you can make it look real and do practical effects that it's the question is do they does it take away their tone by taking away from the kind of comic coming right off the page type thing from them I, and i still have only seen a few episodes of invisible liked it a lot but but um yeah, i don't know yeah yeah what do you think do you think they could adapt it invincible to live action yeah yes but again it's all about casting it's all about who's involved yeah. uh, and it's all about how much money they're going to have to create because you're going onto multiple worlds in invincible and you're going out into space multiple times so right. Right. That's going to be, you can do the grounded one, sure, but you, if you're going to tell the whole story, you're going to have to go to a lot of different places. Again. I got to watch that. Sure. A lot of money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Alton Rudder, great to hear that they have season, they have greenlit season Ooh. two of Monarch. Yeah. I mean, I, that's another show I need to watch. And um, spinoffs. They got spinoffs as well. Okay. Yeah. Armada, Pump for Tulsa King returning this fall. Is it actually returning? Yes. Okay. Right now. Yeah. yeah wondering, wondering when the old man is coming back. I'm not right. sure. Have you heard Kalinowski's imitation of Bridges on that show? Great. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah, he, did, he did it on. He did it on the show. Okay. Yeah, okay. but um, we um, yeah, Tulsa King is going to be. So that's why you wrote me and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can support Stallone. Yeah, I'm like, we don't know. No, no. What, I texted her said, what, what do you think about this? Is what I said. But you did. You did. You said. But you said if it was true, I don't know if you yeah. could support it. And that's the thing is that like, I don't do that thing anymore. Um, and not saying that you do, but but I don't do that thing anymore. Where people will go, oh, you know what? Look at this. Look. at out it was like no i don't i don't know what else happened i don't know if this person I didn't tweet it out i, 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 I was like I didn't. wait for it to see what happens Let's see yeah. what happens because why because who knows if people are disgruntled who knows if somebody wanted money who knows if, if it's if it's legit we don't know yet so i don't know what the reports are yet on the tulsa king but as far as the actual show itself yes i'm i am excited to see season yeah. two i like season one a lot so grillo is coming on in season two so frank grillo being a part of season two is going to be exciting. I'm ex I'm looking forward. Oh, to it. is Frank Grillo on, on season two? Yeah, he, he oh. announced it on his Instagram. Oh, that's great. That's, that's great. That's great. Um, Carlton Rudder, could Jesse Plemons be the next Seymour Hoffman? Well, I know what you're saying. Um, yeah. there's only one Seymour Phillips. Oh, wow. Good point. Good point. But yes, he is that kind of quality actor or that caliber of actor that is just every time he shows up, you know you're getting a good performance. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, Michael Green. Adam uh, Shetford is report is reporting that slap fighting will be in the next Olympics. Really? Who would like to slap the hell out of John and Chris? John and Chris. Who would you know. like? Who would know. like to slap down? What? I don't, I don't know. know. That but um, but slap slap, that can't be right. Have you seen the slap league? I've seen the slap league, but that's yeah, what's his face uh, from Dana White is. Uh, no, the I know. I know. I've seen it, but they they, they can't. <sighs> I they can't be. I hope not. I can't. You can't. That can't be part. That that physical injury on purpose. No, like yeah. That to me, like that's that's the difference. That that was always the argument with MMA when boxing. Yeah, yeah. With boxing is, I was a big boxing fan for a very long time, yeah. but the reason why there's so much brain damage and so much cause to the head is because the majority. Yes, you can punch to the body, but the majority of it is two people standing toe to toe for twelve yeah. rounds, ten rounds, going after the head. In MMA, you you're going for tap outs. You're right. you're going you know you're going for the throat. You're going for the these different things that like it's yeah there are knockouts and these other things too, but it's not the overall objective. So there was always a kind of this is just someone standing there and letting you hit me in the face as hard as you can. There's no defense, nothing else too. I I don't get this one. I don't get it. It's, I'm not going to tell you that I haven't stopped and watched footage from it. Of course, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's I'm ooh. supporting the Olympics though. That's yeah, no, it shouldn't be in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. We have a couple left, I think. Um, Renee Reyes. Hey, 
How do you guys feel about the Jon Snow show being canceled? Personally, I'm mad. They need to bring justice to that character. I, we talked about it the other day on the show. It's um, it's a bummer, but what I will say is that it, I, I, I give them props if they look at it in the same way that they had that um, Naomi Watts show. Yeah. Yep. And they said, not working. Yep. Don't tarnish the brand if it ain't working. Don't just put something out there because I want to see it too. I like Jon Snow a lot. He's my favorite character, but yeah. if it ain't there, don't push it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why House of Dragon took forever yep. to get up there. And they wanted to make sure it was a damn good one, or else they were going to ruin the brand even more. And they didn't want to do that. So I like that they've been very particular and picky about uh what they want to create there mm -hmm. with uh, with the House of Dragon stuff. Okay, All right. That's it. We that's did it. it. That's it. All right. So John, thanks for joining me here today, man. And we'll be back obviously next week. But what um what else? What do you got going on today? What's tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, I might go live later on today. I'm kind of in a mood. I'm kind of in a prickly mood. There's a lot of news going on. I might go live later on at five o'clock today for an episode of the nation. Have some fun doing that, but we've got definitely Shogun review tomorrow with me and Steve for episode nine. Going to be a lot of fun. The X-Men newest episode is going to pop off. So the geek buddy is going to talk about that as well. Might have a fallout review coming up in the next couple of days with the geek buddies, which will be a lot of fun. Geek buddy stuff coming up later on this week as well. More reviews, reactions. As Kristen said, ministry of gentlemanly warfare. I'm going to do my out of theater reaction tomorrow night. Abigail Wednesday night. So all that stuff happening. Head on over to my channel, youtube.com slash John Roca says. See all the stuff that's going down over there. Yeah. Uh, before you go, John, we got Haskell. Haskell got oh. solo, solo bro Cayman's phone. Heyman was so freaked out by the son of Haku. That's right. Haku's yeah. son. Another reason why I love Haku. He stepped up on the bottom rope. The bloodline civil war is coming. Yes. So he's excited. He's excited about that. We talked about it for a little bit, Haskell. I know you came in a little late, but um, yeah. we're excited about that for sure. So um, all right, everybody. So John, thank you, brother. We'll Thanks. see you, Thanks, uh, you soon. Thank you guys for joining us here today on the show. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I'm going to put the, I obviously always put the sponsors in the list there too. Thank you so much. We have Patreon. We do all that stuff. But we'll be back tomorrow. Um, Riley's going to be back on the show for UAP Tuesday. If you didn't already know that we have a channel that we do the UAP news, it's Down to Earth with Christian Harloff. You can join over there for that. So thanks again. We appreciate you guys. And we'll see you guys on the flip side. Thanks for joining us here today on the show. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>